Hi guys! I'm here doing sort of a haul, sort of not a haul. Calling it a haul because, you know, this is YouTube and we have algorithms. And two, I just finished reading this, A Breath of Snow and Ashes by Diana Gabaldon, and I don't know what to do with my life, so I'm gonna film a video. Let's get going. <laughs> So the books I have here, I'm going to use to help me study for the next novel I'm writing, which I'm going to start in November. Some of these books I have already read. Some of them I'm going to read parts of. Some of them I'm going to read tiny snippets of. And some of them I might just look at the pictures. Like, I mean, there are books in here that I know I'm never going to read all of, but they will serve their purpose. Some of them are fiction, some are nonfiction. They don't all take place exactly during the time period that my story is going to take place, but you can still, getting distracted because my guinea pigs are play fighting, you can still glean a certain ambiance from all of these. So I'll try to tell you if I've read them yet. I'm sorry, the pigs. Guys! Ugh, I'm being stupid. So I'll tell you whether or not I have read them if I intend to read them entirely or just what parts I'm going to look through. So the first one I have here is called When Christ and His Saints Slept. I've talked about this book not really in detail, but it's basically a story of the Civil War called the Anarchy. This is the author's picture. This is an old copy. This is not the copy I initially read out of. I just found this one online. About the Anarchy, which was a succession crisis in the High Middle Ages, because William the Conqueror's grandson died without heir, so we've got ailing Henry I on the throne, and really two main claimants, his daughter, Matilda, or Maud, who was backed by her half-brother, who was kind of the king's favorite bastard, Robert of Gloucester, and then cousin, Stephen, who had no claim to the throne other than that he was was a big supporter of the church, and he was the king's nephew, so he was William the Conqueror's grandson. So, yeah. I'm gonna look through this. Um, look at the cover. That art is, I mean, the lighting's not good, but yeah, so I'm gonna peruse through this and see what I can glean out of it. All right, this one I have read in its entirety, as embarrassing as it is. <laughs> This is called The Normans, Warrior Knights and Their Castles. I have read it. <laughs> I read all of it. Let me see if I can find a cool illustration in here. One thing about this book, I wish it said more of like the castles at war, because um, that would have been more helpful to me, as opposed to just like how they were constructed. Um, and it kind of meandered off into parts I didn't care about, like as in parts of the world, like Sicily, the Normans in Sicily didn't care. But guys, by the time this is done, I think you're going to have a good clue of what my new novel is going to be about, even though I'm not telling you. This one I haven't read in its entirety yet. I've read the first part of it, and unfortunately, it's been used before. Um, so someone's highlighted in it. I don't really understand highlighting, like when you're studying for a test or something. It's like, what, so you can read it again? Like... I don't know, but if you have, if you're like me, and you have, this is kind of interesting, let's look at the two comparisons, and you have, like, a bunch of different, like, books that you're constantly scrolling through to get information, then highlighting is a good tactic, but, um, yeah, I tell my students, we don't really highlight in my class, because to study for a test, it's not, it's not the best maneuver, all right, books are flowing everywhere. History of the Medieval World. I got this, I was turned on to this from Peg at the History Shelves channel, so I'll tag her. I literally saw her haul, The History of the Ancient World. She mentioned History of the Medieval World, and so I went and bought it as soon as she mentioned it. Thank you, Peg. I love you. Um, I've actually watched a lot of your videos today in between reading <laughs> A Breath of Snow and Ashes, so here's this, and I have bookmarked the section I'm going to start reading. Will I read this one in full? Probably not. I don't know if I can. It's a lot. Like, I just don't have that brain. But, um, yeah, so it goes from the conversion of Constantine to the First Crusade. 
and this part I'm going to start at is between 985 and 1050. My entire story takes place in that one little pocket of history. Can you guess what it's about? We'll see. Then this is a series I got a while ago. This is actually a love story between William the Conqueror and his wife Matilda. Um, it's a novel. It looks like one of those, like, Fabio love stories, so it's called The Bastard King. Ooh, there's a bookmark in it. It's called The Bastard King. It's a little ripped. Obviously, I got it secondhand. I'm going to have to take that up. So, yeah, um, oh, this will come in handy, but it's about William the Conqueror, and uh, first page, on a hot summer's day in the year 1026, Robert, Viscount of Exemes, who was the brother of the reigning Duke of Normandy, saw a beautiful girl watching her family's linen in the river. Big hint. All right, and this one. This one I am eventually going to read all of. Um, this is by the woman who I think, not, drum, Guns of August. She wrote Guns of August. I'm like, Drums of Autumn. No, that's Outlander. But this is a distant mirror, the calamitous 13th century. My story doesn't take place in the 13th century, but I'm still going to read a little bit about this because this was pretty much a Norman society. Anytime after the conquest and um, really before the Hundred Years War, which this is amidst the Hundred Years War, but it's a Norman society. Okay, classic Sir Gowan and the Green Knight. Oh, this old tale of King Arthur and the Green Knight that runs in and gets his head chopped off and walks away with it. And this does not have the old English in it. So um, this is Sir Gowan and the Green Knight. And yes, I say Gowan. If you say Gawain, you're wrong. Like, sorry. But Sir Gowan and the Green Knight, which I've read. Sir Orfeo, which I haven't read. And then The Pearl, which I have not read either. I'm going to read all three of these because these are stories that my characters... I believe would have been familiar with. I think, remembering what I learned in medieval literature, I think actually Sir Gowan and the Green Knight might have been a 14th century tale, but did you know that? I highly doubt it. No. Okay, this is probably the big one that's really going to help me the most. The Very Secret Sex Lives of Medieval Women um, speaks for itself. Um, let's see, is there anything... Is there any raunchy portrait? Um, yeah. Very Secret Sex Lives of Medieval Women. I'm very curious about this. All right. So this I bought for like $11. <laughs> I'm quite embarrassed to admit that I paid $11 for this because it's in the public domain and it's kind of uh, my own darn fault for not knowing it was in the public domain. It's Dreamland and History, the Stories of the Norman Dukes. So, yeah. Okay. The Red Queen... This I am already reading, and it's going to come in more useful than I ever thought a Philippa Gregory novel could when trying to remain accurate to the time period. But the way women are spoken of in the 15th century in here uh, is definitely something that could echo. Is it echoing if it's coming before? I don't know. Mirror. I don't know, the earlier century. So The Red Queen, I will read this in its entirety and I will review it because I'm reading it anyway, but I didn't realize how much it would actually help my writing. Latvona, this I will read. <laughs> um, this is historical horror, I believe. This takes place in Germany. Um, little Merrick, the abused, delusional son of the village shepherd, never knew his mother. His father told him she died in childbirth. So I hear it's disgusting and grotesque, but... I'm pretty sure it's the 12th century, which is around the same time. <laughs> around, around. You're getting this, you know, around the same time. Bring as much information as you can. Some of it'll stick. So I'm going to read this in its entirety, and I am going to do a review on it. All right, what's next? This one I've already read. <laughs> Medieval Bodies. This one is strange. So it takes, I actually hauled this on this channel, but it takes, like, each part of the human body so like the head is like what people thought and the feet are how people like how far people traveled and there is some incredible illustrations in this and i gotta find one so this is the senses 
and look at that. So this is one I'm definitely going to be referring back to. I have read it in its entirety. I gave it four stars. It's amazing. Can't recommend enough. Get the hardback. Don't get the paperback because the images will not be in color. So, pro tip. Some more. <laughs> Beowulf. This one is bilingual. This one is bilingual. So we've got Old English here. Pretty sure. Yeah, Old English. And then modern English. So, yeah. Oh, no. So, Sir Gowan is as old as Beowulf. I was thinking of the Canterbury Tales. Why would I ever think of that? <laughs> I hate that story. It's not even finished, and you still make us read it in school? Like, no, I'll never do that to my students. I hauled this on my channel, the early Middle Ages. It's not the early Middle Ages, it's the high Middle Ages, but it's a really old book. It takes place from 1066, so that's that's the High Middle Ages, after the Conquest. Um, but yeah, so, old, 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 uh, gosh. Well, someone put their name in it, and they wrote in cursive, so obviously it's pretty old, because <laughs> no one writes in cursive anymore, thankfully. I can't really read it. Yeah, 1951, so this is an old, old book. Then this one, the second to last one I have here with me, stories of the crusades and so the crusades were already going on during my time period but these are actual even though this was in the non-fiction section these are actual just like little stories that people would have told to each other that take place in the crusades they're stories they're fiction so i'll be referencing this one this one i probably will read in full just because it's so tiny and the art inside is really cool last one You've probably heard of these authors, um, Francis and Joseph Giles, or Gies, Giles, Gies, because they wrote Life in a Medieval Castle, which um, was referenced by George R. R. Martin when writing Game of Thrones. So this is Women in the Middle Ages, and I'm going to read all of this. There are actually a couple more I'm going to use that I realize are still tucked away on my shelf. Um another one about women in the Middle Ages, and then just another his general history of the Middle Ages. So that's what I'll be using when I start writing my novel come November. So I got all these books out. I'm rearranging my shelves because they looked horrible, and um, this was a good incentive to get up and get this video done that I've been wanting to make for a while, and to reorganize the shelves that <laughs> are pretty much just a gang of Jenga gone terribly, terribly wrong. All right.